Hi friends, in this video, we are going to discuss about DC shunt generator. Okay, let's see. DC shunt generator, nothing but you know that here the field winding in parallel to armature winding. Yes or no? So let's see how it is. For example, this is my field winding. For example, this is my armature winding. How this? These two should be in parallel like this. This is the DC shunt generator. Here we have a armature resistance and generated EMF EG RA this is the voltage V and the current IL here the armature current and here the current flowing through this one is called field current which is shunt field current because the current flows through shunt field winding of course here the resistance is called shunt resistance. Is it okay up to now? Right. Next. Let's see. In generally, for example, here my load current is 20 amperes. Here the armature current is 25 amperes. Then this is 5 amperes and 20 amperes coming like this. For example, if the load increased to required 30 amperes, then what is the current from this? Here, the current from this is 35 amperes, 30 this one and 5 this one. Still, the current increased. Here, I required a load current of 50 amperes. What is the armature current here? The armature current is 55 amperes in that 5 amperes is this one and 50 amperes. Nothing but when load increases, the armature current increases, load current increases, but there is no change in shunt field current. Is it okay? So now tell me what happened here actually? In this condition, we know EMF is directly proportional to phi into N. Here, the flux is constant irrespective of the loads. So, the generated EMF is directly proportional to speed. This is fixed. Same as a separately excited generator. Is it clear? Right. Next one. What is the current equation here? See here the armature current is split into two currents. So the armature current is equals to line current plus shunt field current. This is the current equation. Then what is the voltage equation here? This is the loop. So write that EG is equals to EG is equals to IA RA plus V. Again, the value is same as a separately excited generator. And from this, the armature current IA is equals to EZ minus V upon RA. This is also same, the armature currents. Here the small change, but this is same. But actually this is not exact one. What is there here? Here another one also is there. That is brush drop. Actually small drop is there. So current equation and voltage equation. Next, what is the power equation? Multiply with current. So here, the power is EZIA. And here, the power loss is IA square RA. And here, the power is VIL. And here, the power loss is brush losses. Apart from this, we have another loss also. What is that loss? Yeah, the power nothing but total circuit power. Voltage nothing but only loop equation is the voltage. Then what is the loss? Another one, shunt field losses. What is the shunt field losses? 
VISH or ISH square RSH or VISH. This is the shunt field copper losses. Are you okay getting or not? So this is generally the current and voltage and power equations of DC shunt generator. This is extra added for separately excited generator. So diagram completed, mathematics completed, now the graph. So first one, open circuit characteristics. Open circuit characteristics are drawn between field current and generated EMF. We know that in generally, even though field current is zero, here it produces some EMF due to residual flux, residual magnetism because this is a self-excited generator. So when the field current increases, EMF also increases because the EMF is directly proportional to field current up to saturation. We know this. Then what's next? This is OCC, right? Then what's next? Next is the internal and external characteristics. Let's see what is next. Internal and external characteristics. First of all, internal. Internal characteristics are drawn between armature current and generated EMF. E, when the armature current is zero, we know E is equals to V plus IA, RA. If IA is equals to zero, then E is equals to V, that is equals to E naught, no load EMF. We know that this is, for example, no load EMF. When IA increases, if IA increases, armature reaction increases, then flux decreases and EMF decreases, this no. So, how we can recognize? Here actually no load, but this is the drop. This drop represents the armature reaction drop. This is the internal characteristics. How we can draw the external characteristics? External characteristics are drawn between V and IL. For example, this is IL and this is V. How generally V is equals to E minus IA, RA. If IL zero, nothing but IA zero are very small actually. Take as zero, then this V is equals to E, which is called no load voltage. This is only no load voltage here. When the IL increases, automatically IA, RA drop increases, then ultimately load voltage reduces, load voltage reduces. This represents that IA, RA drop. Nothing but the internal characteristics represents armature reaction drop. The external characteristics represents ohmic drop. You should remember that like a ohmic drop. This is called ohmic drop. Right. Okay, sir. Next. This is generally diagram mathematics from that mathematics graph. But here, what are the applications of DC shunt generator? This is also very important. Can you tell me what are the applications for this? See here, in the load characteristics, here the load voltage is reducing when load increases. But actually, this decrement is very small, not even 10%, just around 5% only. This decrement is very small, just 5%. That's why these are used for constant voltage applications. What is that? Constant voltage applications. Where we are using, sir? Generally, I, I will explain in synchronous meshing. In generally, Exciter for synchronous machine in synchronous machine for exciter and constant supply voltage source constant supply voltage source as a DC generator and also battery charging 
battery charging we can use and also lighting system lighting system where interaction generally or in home applications generally like this condition we are using DC shunt generator. The applications of DC shunt generator generally constant voltage applications. That is exciter, constant voltage source, battery charging, lighting system like interaction and home applications. This is what generally the applications of DC shunt generator. Sir, what are the applications of separately exited generator? You didn't give me. Actually, that is less usage. If DC shunt generators are not available, then you can use uh, separately excited generators. Both are same, no? Yes or no? 100% same. The only change is that this is. And another change, this is the one change and this is the another change. Not this one, sorry. Not this one. What is the another change in the mathematics? The another change is this one. This is the one change. And this is the one change and next this is separately excited there and self-excited here. These are the changes. But remaining everything is same. Right? This is the DC shunt generator which is very important. Right? Thank you.